Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? Hey, Brian. I am good. It's good to be with you in Horse Center. We're turning our show back over to the Breeders' Cup with a little bit of uh, Breeders' Cup Classic previews. Yeah, these are uh, these are some props for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Maybe one more than the other. Uh, a lot of lot of good races, a lot of graded stakes throughout the country, Kentucky, California, New York. But we're gonna keep an eye on the Breeders' Cup Classic races, starting with the Awesome again in California, and then we'll go to the Woodward at uh, Belmont at Aqueduct. It's it's Aqueduct, but they call it Belmont at Aqueduct, Matt. I, for some reason, it's uh, a Saudi Crown. Last week announced himself as a possible Breeders' Cup Classic or a possible Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile with a win in a sloppy edition of the Penn Derby. I hope you had fun there. Uh, yeah, you know, considering that the weather was very, very blustery and and rainy. Uh, yeah, I, I I had a good time uh, there. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, friends from the media and some Horse Center fans uh, to hang out with, so it was good. Good, good. Glad to hear it, Matt. Let's jump into the awesome again. This is a $300,000 race. It's grade one. Most importantly, Matt, it's at Santa Anita. So I, I think this is a serious prep for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, you, you know, maybe some of the favorites for the Breeders' Cup Classic are not running this week. But uh, certainly a bunch of these horses are hoping to run a good race in the awesome again, nine furlongs. And parlay that in to a start in the Breeders' Cup Classic five weeks later. Uh, Matt, let's start with the uh, projected favor. We haven't seen a morning line, so this is our morning line. National Treasure. We went with the three-year-olds. The three-year-olds did awfully well in the uh, Pacific Classic at Del Mar. National Treasure, three-to-one favorite. Yep, uh, for uh, Bob Baffert, of course. And we're talking about the uh, the Preakness winner. Uh, uh, who uh, went out to the front and won the second uh, leg of the Triple Crown. Um, since then, uh, not uh, showing nearly as much with a uh, sixth-place finish in the Belmont Stakes and a fifth-place finish uh, in the Travers. Both of those races certainly had stronger fields than was in the Preakness. Um, so now National Treasure is uh facing older horses in the awesome again. Yeah, it's another chance for the three year olds to show that they are as good or better than the older horses, Matt. Uh, like we talked about a little bit, Arabian Night and Go Rocket Ride one two in the Pacific Classic last month at Delmar going 10 for longs. National Treasure, of course. Yeah, he got an easy pace in that Preakness, and he was able to win it. He's run in a lot of big races. He's run primarily pretty well. And I'll even throw this out, Matt. I don't think his Belmont nor his Travers were bad, per se. But 12 furlongs and maybe even 10 furlongs of the Travers is a little bit more than he wanted, and he faded in the stretch. Uh, but he was there uh, when they turned for home in both those races, maybe shortening up to nine furlongs. And maybe a slightly easier field, despite being against older horses, is in store for National Treasure this time. Uh, yeah, the, you, you can see there on the graphic behind the uh, the uh, horses and odds, the uh, familiar blue shadow role of Bob Baffert. And of course, Baffert will be well represented in looking for another awesome again. His other horse in here is Defunded, who could be the second choice, Matt, although Defunded as good as he was for a while, including this spring at Santa Anita with a couple of nice graded stakes wins, he did not look so good in his last two efforts, both at Del Mar. Yeah, that, that's for sure. And we've got, you know, his last effort was a sixth place finish in the Pacific Classic going that uh, mile and a quarter distance. We've got a whole bunch of horses in this race uh, uh that are coming out of the Pacific classes, not including the winner of that race, not including Arabian Night, who uh, I assume is training up to the uh, to the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, yeah, I, and I agree with what you said earlier. Um, the you know change in distance down to a mile and eight, the movement to Santa Anita. 
uh, is, I think, going to be a factor with this field of horses. Uh, there, are, there are some that will appreciate that change in distance and the change in track. I'm not sure what to expect from, uh, uh, from Defunded, but he's coming from Bafford and, and uh, on his best uh, uh, can certainly be a factor in here, but I think I like others better. Yeah. Um, also, Co four to one. There, there's a little typo there. So, uh, Co four to one on our morning line is slow down. Andy at four to one. He's the three horse Matt, and he beat Defunded uh, in both of those races at Del Mar. He didn't win though. He was uh, a good second in the San Diego in his second race of the year, and then last time he was a good third uh, behind the three year olds. He, he actually was a little uh, ranked during the race, but he, he was in there, uh, certainly in the stretch of that mile and a quarter race. He might be another one who enjoys a slightly shorter distance here of the nine furlongs. And I think, uh, trainer Doug O'Neill and team are deciding whether slow down Andy will make another run at the breeders cup dirt mile in which he was third last year, or possibly stretching him back out to 10 furlongs after a pretty good Pacific classic for slow down Andy. Uh, certainly a factor, beat Defunded in the last two. Although I will say Defunded last year in this race, Matt, was the winner. Slow Down Andy was third, although Slow Down Andy was a three-year-old at the time. Now he's a uh, four-year-old, and his form is starting to look good again. Yeah, I, I agree, Brian. Uh, he's run a lot of good races. Uh, uh, hasn't gotten a win uh, in a while, but, uh, you know, Already, I can hear from our descriptions that that this is this group of horses out in California that have been taking turns winning races, and it's hard to know uh, who's going to uh, uh, come up big each each time we have one of these Grade One races out in California in the handicap division. Yeah, and the three horses we've talked about so far, the three favorites, Matt, uh, slow down, Andy. National Treasure and Defunded all have the ability to be pace factors. Let's take a look now at the Timeform US pace projector for this grade one race at Santa Anita. And they say slow down Andy is the uh, the speed of the race. I'm not completely sure about Matt. He likes to stalk. He certainly has good tactical speed, but I don't know for sure if he'll be on the lead. It almost looks like he's lone speed here and they, and they say favor horses on or near the early lead. But I think both of those Bafferts could show more speed than this chart shows. And uh, I, I would be surprised if uh, Slow Down Andy has things too easy on the lead on Saturday. Yeah, I, I think that little description in the blue uh, on top of the pace projector is their way of saying that they expect a uh, relatively slow pace in here. And, you know, if that's the case, it would seem like... Uh, uh, it might be a good strategy for Doug O'Neill and slow down Andy to, uh, to get out further on the lead. But we're talking about uh, national treasure in here, Brian, who has had his best success out there on the lead. We're also looking, you'll note on the, on the chart here that the blinkers go back on for national treasure. I don't know, Brian, it sure seems like, you know, with, with national treasures past and and he's a Baffert horse that it's hard to imagine that they're not going to send him. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you, Matt. I think national treasure will be right there, if not on the lead on Saturday. The three year old trying to go all the way against the older horses, but then you look at Defunded, who could be right there as well, and you look at Stiletto Boy possibly as another horse. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I, I think. I, I don't think it'll be a fast pace per se in this nine for a long awesome again, but I do think that it won't be quite as easy for uh, slow down Andy as this chart makes it look. All right, Matt, we mentioned Stiletto Boy. Stiletto Boy got off to a bad start last time in the Pacific Classic and just never ran a lick. In fact, he was eased down the stretch, uh, but he's run some pretty good races. He's run some pretty good races at Santa Anita. Uh, winning the Santa Anita Handicap this year, one of the horses he beat was defunded. Yep, that's going back to his last win, and and we know that uh, uh, he he's run good race, run well in big races. Uh, 
yeah, I guess we if you're willing to draw a line through that Pacific Classic and and say that the bad start just put him in the kind of position that is not favorable for Stiletto Boy towards the back of the track and they tried to make a little run and the jock assumed that, you know, hey, th- th- nothing's gone well here. I'll just uh uh, you know, I'll just let this horse take it easy the rest of the race. If you're willing to assume that and and hope that he gets back to some of his bigger races, you know, he was sixth in the Stephen Foster before that, third in the Oakland Handicap. It's been a while since uh, uh, he's run his really best race. Yeah, in the Oakland Handicap, you, you, you say third, but he was right there at the finish. So I, I think that was a pretty good performance. If he can get back to that, or the Santa Anita handicap win, of course, Stiletto Boy, an interesting horse. He'll have better odds simply because of the Foster was not great. And then the uh, Pacific Classic was a real bomb. So Stiletto Boy, an interesting long shot play perhaps here in the awesome again. Those horses all have some tactical speed now, four of them that we've mentioned already. Let's talk about some horses that have come from off the pace. We see two of them on our morning line here, Matt, at six to one. The, uh, the rail horse is Senor Buscador. He, he doesn't always fire his best shot, but he was good at Del Mar. In fact, he won the San Diego, rallying by Slow Down Andy, before running a decent fourth in the uh, Pacific Classic. Yeah, I agree, Brian. Uh, uh, he has run some good races. We've liked him going into uh, some of the races. I thought about uh, him a good deal in here, but geez, sometimes he gets so far behind. And if, in fact, this is a slow pace and even a moderate pace with a mile and an eighth distance. That's going to make it tough for him to uh, to get the win. Maybe maybe he can sneak into the exotics. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Uh, Senior Buscador likes his his best race setup is uh, coming from coming from well back and rolling down the stretch, and I, I think it really does become pace dependent because he's kind of in that group. Slow down, Andy. Uh, National Treasure, we assume, defunded Stiletto Boy. He he he's not uh, noticeably better than those horses, but I, I think he fits with those horses. So if the pace is a little slow, hurts his chances. If the pace is, becomes faster and more contentious, he has a better shot. And I, I think that would be true of the other three-year-old in the field, Skinner. Um, a little disappointing in the Pacific Classic. He was right behind Senior Buscador, but he really didn't do a whole lot down the stretch. Skinner looks like one of those horses or is becoming one of those horses, Matt, that just never seems to get there against good horses. Yeah, and and uh, the, I, I would describe his Pacific Classic as a disappointment. I think just because we expected better from him in that particular spot, uh, we've seen him run, you know, uh, get top three finishes in the uh, uh, Los Al Derby and the Santa Anita Derby, you know, which says, hey, you know, this horse has some talent, but, you know, this is a pretty good field again. I agree. And and the other three horses in here, I would not be shocked if they ran good races, any of the three. Uh, Maybe Paroli is the biggest long shot, but he was second in the Gold Cup earlier this year. Bye Bye Bobby's, uh, the other Fincher horse, along with Senior Buscador on occasion, including his last race, can look pretty good. Celestial Moon, Seems to be improving of late, uh, but that's our rundown of the awesome again, Matt. And uh, I, I, I'm not sure if there's a Breeders' Cup Classic winner in this field. I'm not sure if there's a Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile winner in this field, but I have a good feeling that several of these horses will be running in one of those two races next month or five weeks from now, also at Santa Anita. Let's uh, switch gears, if you will, Matt, uh, more uh, towards your uh, your home base there in New Jersey. We're going to talk the Woodward. The Woodward, we've seen some big Woodwards in our lifetime, uh, grade one, different distances. Uh, it moved back and forth recently to Saratoga and now back to Belmont, although it's not Belmont, it's Aqueduct. So here we are with the Woodward downgraded to grade two recently uh still a good field and and I'm, it's nice to see 10 horses in this woodward um again i think some of these horses still want to make a play several of them want to make a play for the breeders cup classic and this will be a testing ground if it was at belmont it'd be one turn at aqueduct it's two turns yeah uh brian uh 
up until the draw yesterday, I was kind of expecting a more of a field like around six horses, and then then ten have shown up. That you know that does include uh, at this point three horses from the barn of Linda Rice, who has uh, got an awful lot of horses and has an awful lot of horses that are that are running well. Uh, it's got three in here that are running well lately. A couple of them are making a real stretch uh, in the Woodward. So I don't know if all three of them will run. Yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, Linda Rice has been going good for a while, and uh, she has three horses coming in with good form. None of them will be among the favorites, but uh, none of them are complete throwouts uh, either. Uh, could be one of those races where a horse steps up for the first time in their career in the Woodward. Uh, it is a wide open race. We've tabbed Zandon, the cover boy Zandon, as a uh, as a lukewarm favorite in the Woodward, and and, and Zandon is coming off a, a pair of Grade One runner up finishes: one at Belmont and that mile, one at Saratoga and the Whitney. He never looked like a winner in either of those races, Matt, but he's coming out of Grade Ones. He's run a ton of good races without winning. In fact, he's lost eight in a row, Matt. His last win was about 17 months ago in the grade one bluegrass. Yeah, uh, uh, he's got five second place finishes, Brian, in his last seven starts, all of them, all of them in grade one, grade two quality races, a lot of, a number of them against good fields. Um, you know, you, you, you got to label him as a, uh, uh, a horse that doesn't seem to want to get the win, uh, but I don't know. It seems like here uh, Zandon is falling into a spot where you got to think, boy, if he doesn't win this one, I don't know. He's the most accomplished horse in the race, Matt. We're we're, we're going to agree on that. But yeah, there there is the thought with seconds and thirds. Um, a lot of seconds whether he's a horse who wants to win and that happens to horses where they're kind of content to uh uh run uh, ahead of most but not uh, not be the first one to the wire we'll see if zandon can break through here uh, a grade one winner third in the kentucky derby last year like i said in those eight losses he's run a lot of good races without winning let's uh let's go to the time form if i get the right one up here the time form u.s pace projector Oh, here we go, Matt. We got a fast pace. And I agree with Time Form US on this one, Matt. And it partly because Baff, uh, Chad Brown, who trains Zandon, uh, has another horse in the race named Pipeline. And Pipeline is a talented horse. He's kind of lightly raised. His record's kind of spotty. He's got talent, but he definitely has speed. And um, the fact that Pipeline is in this race, I, I wonder if Brown is partly thinking maybe Pipeline can help set up, set the table a little bit for his uh, stablemate Zandon. Yeah, and, and certainly uh, uh, we see that, you know, his last race was in the seven furlong grade one Forgo, um, where uh, uh, he finished fourth. He ran in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile last year, uh, but certainly doesn't look like a win candidate. No, I, w I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so, but he's the one most likely to be on the lead, and he could really make this a pretty fast pace because you got horses like Law Professor, the two, uh, Film Star, one of those Linda Rice horses, the 10, who definitely have good speed. Uh, Law Professor has won some stakes at Aqueduct, but it came against cheaper. He was actually second in the Woodward last year. Um, even Charge It, the one, is uh, pretty close. I I'm not sure he'll be quite that close. But he's got enough speed to be close to this pretty fast pace. And you look in the bottom left-hand corner of this chart, Matt, it says horse, horses lacking pace data three. That's Algiers. We need to talk about Algiers. He's a horse who, who shows speed or, or likes to be right there at least, likes to stalk the lead. So he can be another horse that's uh, forwardly placed early. And it looks like that pace is going to be pretty contentious. Matt Algiers sure looked good this year uh, running on dirt. He's run most of his career races on turf, or at least about two-thirds of his career races on turf. Six-year-old Irish bred. But he has proven the last two years, especially this year, that he likes the dirt. And three races this year at Dubai were all very good. 
Yeah, and and uh, you mentioned Dubai, where he has been running, and that's the reason that the pace projector said there uh, they couldn't make a pace figure for Algiers because uh, uh, he has been running in Dubai. He has not been running in America for the pace figures, but yeah, uh, uh, he w- was a really good second in the Dubai World Cup uh, last year, and he won two group two lead up prep races at uh at Maidan on the way to his good performance in the Dubai World Cup. Yeah, absolutely. Uh two the first two rounds of the Al Maktoum Challenge, he rolled to victory there on the dirt at Maidan. And then uh like you say, a very good second going a mile and a quarter in the Dubai World Cup. Uh those kind of performances could well be enough to win this race. Uh it, it is truly a great two kind of field in my eyes rather than a grade one and that algiers after a six-month layoff his first race in america for mm-hmm. trainer simon christian christopher brings his best algiers has a real shot it'll be interesting he's a wild card it'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, uh odds uh, they let him go off that but uh, i think he'll be in the picture among the favorites off that really good made down form early this year uh, it's been about six months since the Dubai World Cup. So Algiers has some uh, questions to answer. Both Zandon and Algiers are looking at the Breeders' Cup Classic at this point, and the Woodward will tell us more. As it will for Charge It, Matt. Charge It, you know, ever since that second place finish in the Grade One Florida Derby early in his career, he's looked like a horse who could be who could be good, but he's been an enigma. He's he, he, there's races like the Dwyer last year. The suburban this year where he looks like he's ready to take things to another level and it just hasn't panned out including last time where he was a well-beaten fourth behind white barrio and zandon in the witten yeah i i think he's a classic example of us of a horse that's an in and outer uh an in and outer because uh, uh he has had a couple of really really nice wins he's had had some couple couple of nice performances uh hitting the top three but uh when he's not running those good races boy he he is uh uh, not a contender so it's hard to know which charge it we're going to get yeah and and zandon has beaten them the last two times they faced in the met mile in and the whitney although neither were big um Big threats to win the race. Zandon was the one getting uh, second, a clear second in both. So maybe if the race is on the line or the win is on the line, Charger can turn the tables on Zandon. But uh, yeah, a couple of horses who have definite class, but you just don't know for sure if they're if they're really wanting to win a race like that in Zandon and charge it. Number eight, Tyson, I think is very interesting, especially if he's the fourth choice in here, Matt. Tyson is trained by Josie Carroll. Uh, son of Tappet, really lightly raced. He's he's uh, come around this year for trainer Josie Carroll and won a couple of stakes up at Woodbine. Good enough in those in those races early in his career to bring him down to Saratoga for the Jockey Club Gold Cup. He got banged in the beginning, and I still think he ran a pretty good race to be third in his dirt debut, mile and a quarter at Saratoga in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Yeah, and I think I remember when we did our show uh, before the Jockey Club Gold Cup that we talked about uh, 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 Josie Carroll and and bringing horses down to New York uh, successfully. Uh, um, And uh, Tyson, you know, that that was a pretty good effort. Uh, He had some he had nice wins at Woodbine on their uh, on their artificial surface. Winning, uh, uh, winning a grade two up there, um, and, and she's always a dangerous trainer, and I and I think she's picked out a good spot for Tyson here in the Woodward, maybe a better spot than the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Yeah, and I, I think the experience has to help, Matt. Lightly raced, um, it didn't have even a lot of races this year. Getting better, developing. And the fact that he had some trouble and he still ran a good third behind uh, uh, a bright future there and uh, a proxy in the Jockey Club Gold Cup, I think that experience will do him well. Probably just a little bit easier field here. 
But the big thing about Tyson is I think he's getting better, and that that could be enough to win this race. Lots of others, Matt. We said Law Professor was second in this race last year, might like Aqueduct. Uh, Costa Terra uh, is the third from Linda Rice, coming in with good form. Unoho won the Rebel last year at 75 to 1. And O'Connor, a horse from Chile, gets Irad Ortiz Jr. up. He, he's yet to break through in an American stakes race. But if it is a fast pace, O'Connor is a horse who likes to rally. Yeah, and, uh, uh, you know, a couple good races recently, second in the Charlestown Classic, second in the West Virginia Governor uh, Cup. And and anytime you're getting Irad in the saddle, you know that he is going to compete. You know that he is going to get the best that his horse has to offer on any day and uh, uh Safi joseph we know can be dangerous with pr- horses at a bigger price you don't get you don't get irad at double digits very often yeah we'll see if we get him at double digits here but he's an interesting horse again especially if it's a fast pace he likes to rally i don't think any of his american stake starts are good enough to think he can win the woodward but they're just good enough to think if things go his way and he and he gets the pace that he wants, uh, perhaps an interesting long shot in the Woodward. All right, Matt. Like I said, there's a lot of big races. Lucas Classic at Churchill Downs uh, leads a good card. The Turf Classic, uh, Rebels Romance and Warlike Goddess at, at Belmont. Uh, Cody's Wish, of course, Belmont at Aqueduct. Co- Cody's Wish looks uh, to stand over the field in the Vosburg and then Got some good races also at Santa Anita. But these are the two we went with. You, you ready to do some top picks? Let's do it, Brian. All right. I'm going to let you go first, and we'll go in order the way we went. Grade one first, which is awesome again out at Santa Anita. Yeah, awesome again. Um, you know, as I mentioned during in the rundown, I, I, I thought about uh, Senior Buscador a good bit, but didn't really like the pace scenario, which, which – which turned me to uh, uh, slow down Andy, who the pace scenario seems to be much more of a positive. You have to respect his consistency in big races for trainer Doug O'Neill, and and maybe this is the right spot for slow down Andy to get a win again, though. Although, uh, I don't know, national treasure could be dangerous. Yeah, I'm 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 going to echo pretty much everything you said there. I mean, defend, defunded back at Santa Anita could pop up. Uh, Senor Buscador scares me. If, if if it is just enough pace at nine furlongs, he is a scary proposition as well. I think National Treasure is likely to run a good race, an approved race, shortening up in distance from the Belmont and the Travers. But the horse I like best is like you, Slow Down Andy. He's He's, he's older now. He's always been good. I followed this horse since early on in his two-year-old year. He's run a lot of good races. He's a tough horse. Um, it, it, winning the race, he could certainly win, but I have a feeling he'll be right there if he doesn't win. Slow down Andy for me as well in the awesome again. In the Woodward, we have different picks. Matt, who do you like? Well, Brian, call me crazy, but uh, I'm going to say that this is the time when Zandon is going to break through and get a win. Uh, um, I feel like uh, this is the relatively the softest spot that he has had in a long time, uh, racing in some good, really good grade ones. Zandon for me. Yeah, I have no problem with that pick, Matt. I, and I would never call you crazy in, in, a, in a hurtful way, only crazy in a good way. Uh, crazy, the kind of crazy I like. But Zandon, yeah, this race seems to set up a little bit for him. There, there's speed ahead of him. It's nine furlongs. He's run at Aqueduct well before at this very distance. So Zandon, Zandon is the safe horse to pick, I think, that in my opinion, as a horse who's likely to be in the exotics. But as a winner, I, I want to, I want something more. I want something. I want a horse who might be on the way up. And I think Tyson is on the way up. I think I'll get a little bit better odds on Tyson than Zandon. I'm going with the Canadian Tyson. I like that first dirt effort. I think he can improve off that first dirt effort. We've both said this is not a, it's a deep field, but not a great Woodward by any stretch. I think Tyson can do it. He'll be my top pick. 
in the woodwork. All right, Matt. Uh, any other thoughts of these big races this weekend? Hey, I'll be at Aqueduct on Saturday uh, to uh, enjoy a good stakes card. Uh, the the Joe Hirsch Turf Classic Grade One uh, to go along with uh, uh, the Woodward. Cody's Wish is running in the Vosburg. So uh, a good day to be at Aqueduct at the end of September. How's the weather looking for Saturday? Uh, I think it is not going to rain. I mean, uh, uh, so, uh, and we are trending towards some warmer temperatures here in New Jersey. Uh, so I'm hopeful that it's not going to be raining. There you go. Good luck. Cody's wish, probably, if he runs 80% of his ability, wins that Bosberg without much trouble at all. I'm, I'll be rooting not sure she's going to do it, but I'll be rooting for Warlike Goddess in the Turf Classic to win two in a row. Uh, having a female win two straight Turf Classics, that would be something to see. Matt and I both want to thank all of you for watching. We appreciate it every week. Special thanks go out to Candace Curtis in the home office. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there, our sponsor. And, of course, Time Form US for the pace projectors. But most of all, thanks for you watching every week. Turn on those notifications. Make sure you follow us. Give us a comment. Follow us all the way to the Breeders' Cup. We'll be back right here next week with another big episode of Horse Center. We'll see you then.